Hi Sagittarius, welcome to Higher Source Tarot for a tarot reading for all Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Thank you to all of you for your support. I think of you every single day. I send you positive energy and love. We're connected, so we will continue to continue here. And if you're new to the channel, welcome to you. I post new readings every Friday, then again on Monday. So if a reading doesn't resonate, come back in a couple of days and watch a new reading. Or you can look around on Mondays too because the style of reading is different every week. It's a different um, format. So one week there's a pick a card reading. There's a love reading one week. A couple weeks ago, I did a four-month predictive. If you haven't seen that, you might enjoy that as well. And um, if you like tarot and you like the channel, I'd love to invite you to subscribe to Higher Source Tarot. All right, what advice do you have for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? What does Sagittarius need to know, please, for the highest and best good? Okay. We'll begin here with a tarot reading, and then we'll have the Angel Answers Oracle cards as well. Have an Oracle card reading. You've got the Moon, the Three of Swords, the Nine of Pentacles, and the Queen of Cups, the King of Cups, Judgment, the Knight of Pentacles, and the Queen of Swords. Well, if you've had an ending, you've got a relationship here. And as soon as I started to see this, because I love the King and Queen, they are the most, they're like the goals, okay? They're relationship goals. So I feel like there's going to be a decision to, to move forward. There's healing here, there's love here, and a very mature relationship. And I always love the way that that king looks at his queen. It's not in a possessive way, not quite like the emperor and the empress. It's just with pure love. There's a purity about this. And so with this, um, I do feel like there's a new phase that brings in information for you with the moon here. We've got just two major arcana, but I feel like they're important. You know, the moon mirrors the sun and from the moon, you've got these yads, these little yellow droplets coming down. They are gifts from the universe. You also have the watchtowers in the back. Some of you could be reconciliation, okay? Like somebody's been keeping an eye on you. Um, for others though, it may just be a protected energy feeling like you've had a breakup and you want the real thing this time. You don't wanna move forward with somebody that's going to bring in heartache, you know, and I think we can all get that way when we've had a loss. It's grief. We grieve what we thought was going to be, and then we become new again. There's a renewal. And so with the moon too, for some of you, if you've been angry, I feel like there's this energy of sort of withholding um, irrational actions. Okay. I, I think of the story. I knew somebody once, this was like a 30 some year old person who did this they were mad at their ex and they went and smashed their pumpkins. Like really immature energy. You might not be quite at that level, but it's that kind of impulsive, angry energy that I feel like is part of this new, you know, moving through that, letting go of it, releasing it so that you can begin again and begin something that's trustworthy, has integrity, and, and is long-term. You've got long-term commitment here, especially if you were burned. Um, now, if for some of you, this is an interesting combination. I am going to bring this up because with the moon and the three of swords, this can actually, the three of swords can actually be like feeling under the weather and the moon relates to the physical body. And so for some of you, it may be making changes with your diet, nutrition, health in some way, um, doing something, whether it's like physical therapy, I hear something like that. But that again, may be for a very small amount of people, but you do have recovery here. You've got healing and recovery coming. Um, but with for others of you, it definitely is about a breakup, some betrayal here. But there's acceptance here. It's a new phase where you're healing, you're bringing your own um, light forward. You know, you're not bringing that heavy energy forward. And sometimes we stay in this for a little bit and I, it's not comfortable to be here. I don't necessarily recommend it, but I'm just saying that for some of us, that we feel so deeply that it's hard to move out of it, isn't it? And so anyway, it is with acceptance. So, so you may have been single here for a while with the Nine of Pentacles, just working on career moves, working on money, finding that being single, you seem to have more money. Um, and, and so there's prosperity here. You know, the Nines are all about completion and 
goal accomplishments. And so whatever you put your time into, and if it's in the physical body too, because pentacles also can um, represent that, not only the earth, but the human body and money. It's again, feeling really good about where you're at, you know, feeling like you are looking good, you know, you go in to put something on and you like what you're wearing, all that kind of stuff. I know it's materialistic. I do say this from time to time, but if it was a bad breakup, get rid of the shirt you were wearing when you broke up. Don't put that thing back on, especially if you know it reminds you of that. We don't go backwards. We're only going forward. And so with the nine of pentacles, again, she is regal. She feels good about herself. It's you feeling confident, feeling sexy, feeling ready to get out there again. And if it was a job that ended, because I know we focused a lot on relationship. Um, again, you've got this place where you may have already found a new job and are realizing that it was a better replacement. Whatever you're headed towards, it's a better replacement, they keep saying. So with judgment, we love judgment because it's the Archangel Gabriel. And it's the second to last major arcana. It's right after the sun. It's an energy of completion, of mastery. All right, there's freedom here. The Anytime you see unclothed characters, there's acceptance and freedom. You have that a few different times here. And so nothing holds you back. It is an energy of a realization of a renewal. And it's like a fresh new experience. So I do feel like for you, you have a new relationship showing up and it's everything you've been asking for. It's in it. And for some of you, you'll see that what you had before needed to go. You know, it's that kind of realization where you say, now it all makes sense. You know, because that, when you're at the place where you feel like you are touching the end of the world, you think you cannot bear it. And then you get to this place where it all makes sense. Boy, isn't that something. But you're moving into this. So we welcome it with open arms. And it can be a decision, but I do feel like it's even greater than that. It's not just hanging on one single decision. It's almost like a more figurative thing, like that decision to love, heal, move forward, and bring in the heart's desires. So with the King of Cups, you have a partner here. Could be a water sign. That's certainly possible here. Could be a Pisces. Um, that is mature. Somebody who's ready to love. And that's another thing we talk about when people say, oh God, I can't tell them my feelings or they'll run. Then they're not ready for a relationship. This is somebody, and it's not steeped in emotion. You know what I mean? It's not this overdoing it stuff. It's being able to be open and be yourself with this person. It's a very natural it feels like a very natural pro progression in a relationship. So it's not so fast that it seems scary and out of control. It's like it just a love that grows in a mature way. And, um, you know, this, this is an energy too of just living a good life, living a balanced, stable life. And the cups also can be fertility too. Um, so I, we don't talk about that enough. I probably don't. I probably should more, huh? So for some of you too, it's an energy of bringing in fertility if that's what you're asking about. Now the Queen of Cups uh, is, she's a card, an emotional energy. She's a card though of deep, deep love. It's everything around you. People will be attracted to you in this way of from a pure love sense, you know, that highest vibrational stuff. She is a card too of trusting her own intuition and telling you to trust your intuition you feel things deeply for a reason, but sometimes we negate that, don't we? We get out there and say, no, 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 it can't be. Or we say, oh, damn it, I knew that was going to happen. I wish I would have listened. And so with this, it allows you the capacity to believe it, to believe yourself, trust yourself, and go forward in love. And so with the Knight of Pentacles, Knights have good intentions. This one is solid. He's strong. He's committed. He's going to run the distance with you. It's an energy of long-term stability in money and in, in commitments and love. And so with this, he looks out into the future. He's always thinking about the future and planning for the long trip ahead. It's not an uh, impulsive energy. Sometimes it takes him a while um, because of his attention to detail. For some of you, it may be somebody that you're meeting too, who's much like this energy where they're very detail oriented. They're very conscientious. Um, I feel like too, they have a good career. 
there's somebody who commits to things and they don't they don't go back on their word. They do what they'll say they'll do. Very trustworthy energy, whoever this is. And the yellow in the background with the Nine of Pentacles, also it's here. Um, it represents the universe bringing in gifts to you, an energy of feeling excitement, enthusiasm, and a beautiful environment around you. So with the Queen of Swords, that upright sword always depicts a positive completion. All right, it's a successful completion of whatever it is that you're asking about. She is the card of the widow. Um, so again, I do feel like there's grief in this in this reading. Like somebody here has exp in, experienced intense grief over something, whether it was loss of a relationship. Maybe it was a physical um, death. That's possible. Um, but with this, she uses her wounds as wisdom. So she becomes wise. And the other thing with this too is... She is a little emotionally detached. And so for some of you, it brings in some balance with the Queen of Cups so that you're not getting so far into the emotional attachment piece of it that it hurts so badly, right? I mean, I know that we're here to love, but the ego, when it gets so emotionally attached, it, it becomes too conditional. We can get way too conditional when we do that. And so that brings in that balance of having an unconditional regard and it doesn't mean that we don't give a crap about our lives. We still care, but we can, you know, we can respond differently. We can respond in a way that's not so desperate and needy. Because I would say the Queen of Swords is certainly not desperate or needy. <laughs> um, so she's she's noble. She's noble in that there's that sort of sense of being regal with the Nine of Pentacles too. Strong, empowered energies. Helpful people, that's interesting because you don't have a lot of, you know, it could be with that moon and, and three of swords for those of you, if it's a physical issue, improving health. Normally I'd say this is completely spiritual, but in this case, it could be physical as well. Let go and let the universe, okay? Let go and let it flow, Sagittarius, within the next few months, they say. And you've got a yes. So good things are on the way for you. There's definitely a very loving relationship here. I love you too, and I'll be back again soon.